Well, hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm praying that uh, you are in a good place and uh, staying healthy and staying well. And uh, I'm just uh, glad to be doing this. Um, today is December 10th, 2020. We are in week 38. It's just still, I say this every single week, but it's still hard to believe that we're still continuing uh, virtually and in week 38 of our time in Bible study together on Thursday night. But I uh, just want to say welcome. I say thank you for uh, inviting me into your place and you being able to watch this video. And I know the format has been changing over the last couple of weeks, but uh, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. And uh, if we need to change up something, we'll try to do that and see how that works. You know, we're just making this up as we go. Um, Facebook Live had its challenges over the course of those months that uh, we got together on Thursday nights and uh, got distractions, dogs barking, all kinds of issues that come up during those things. But just like any uh, time together, even at church service on Thursday nights, it's uh, you kind of go with the flow and you adapt to what you need to adapt to. So uh, I guess that what this is what we're doing here now. But I am so excited for today's message. Um, just want to ask beforehand before we get started on how everyone is doing i know that uh, many of you are keeping track of the, the coronavirus and it's currently at an all-time high right now for uh our country in, in the world i think that um we are at about one-third of the u.s actually being in shutdown mode again uh there is a vaccine that's on the way so not sure how you feel about that i'm not even sure how i feel about that but um, just continue to uh, do what you need to do, stay well, stay healthy, do the things that you need to do to stay well and healthy. And more importantly, uh, just, you know, everybody's got their different uh, level of comfort. So whatever level you are at, I pray that you will be at that place. And if that means that you need to stay away from eating in restaurants or not going to the gym or whatever the case may be, I pray that uh, you are comfortable in the place that you're in right now. So hopefully, you know, society and whatnot is not pushing you to a place that you don't want to be in, even though that is the answer for some of us. But, you know, let, let's adapt to this and, and stay well. Um, the election is still in, in question, so we're still continuing to watch the data and the facts unfold for all that mess. And it is a mess. Uh, next week will be December 17th. We will be serving a meal to the homeless population in Annapolis and in Concord, North Carolina. So we're looking forward to being able to do that for folks that are in need, especially nowadays. Um, Kyle does a lot of work uh, in Uptown Charlotte, and there's one section that he gets to drive by a lot that has hundreds and hundreds of uh, tents on a piece of property, and the city council is now involved. And there are a lot of people that are hurting uh, in the world today, and especially in our communities. And I'm sure there's no different where you live as opposed to where I'm, where we live. So um, be, just be in prayer for those folks, and uh, maybe we can serve them in some capacity next week with a warm meal and a handshake and, you know, some words of encouragement. So uh, a lot of times folks just uh, are in a tough place. They just, they want to tell their story. They want to be heard. They want to feel like somebody cares when, you know, you're especially living on the street, and especially when it's cold out now. It's just, it's just tough, I'm telling you. Uh, continue prayers for my dad and for Gail. Uh, prayers for Mary and Wayne. Uh, Wayne does have a doctor's appointment coming up for a heart health check on Friday. So be in prayer for Wayne. This is pretty much going to determine what, what's going to happen in terms of what they can do as far as the doctors go with his, his thing. So Wayne, we're going to be praying for you, buddy. It was good to see you and Mary uh, yesterday. That was good. Uh, continue to pray for Kyle and Maddie for opportunities and their relationship and for Tony and Barbara for healing. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Um, I don't know. Uh, for Roger's mom, I want to add that on there. Um, I'm not going to say anything more for that, Roger, but uh, we're praying for your, your mom. And uh, last announcement that I have is uh, it's Kyle's birthday today. It's hard to <laughs> hard to believe 23 years has passed. And, you know, where does time go, man? It's just, it just goes by so quick. I don't get it. It doesn't seem like that even that's even possible. But uh, happy birthday, Kyle. Your mom and I are very proud of you as well as everybody, everyone else here. Uh, you you got great things ahead of you, and, and this is just one step, man. 23 is a pretty cool year. Um, Carol and I got married when I was 23, and, you know, life, life took on a, di a different chapter, a different adventure, and I'm sure that uh, your 23 years 
uh, leading into 24 is going to be no different. So uh, we're proud of you, man. We love you. So with that being said, I, I got a lot to say today. We are on a march today. So you guys are going to have to put your thinking caps on. You're going to have to dig in, open your heart, open your eyes, open your ears, and stick with me on this because this is going to be awesome. I'm telling you. So with that, let's let's pray and we'll, we'll dig in. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for today. We just thank you for this time together, Lord. We thank you for uh, the prayer requests uh, because they are important to us. They are important to the person, and they, we know that they're important to you. And, Lord, we ask that you would be in each, and the, each of those situations, the ones that are even unmentionable, Lord, that have not been mentioned. We pray that uh, you will be in them because you already know what those things are. Lord, I ask that you would keep us safe as Corona and the vaccine and everything else is in full motion. Uh, Lord, it's just mind boggling on what is taking place here today and in this season of time. It's just, I don't even know what to expect, what's coming next or what's going to happen next. But Lord, we know that um, we trust you and you have all this in your hands. It's in your control. You already are working ahead of us and making a way for us. You are fighting the battles that we know nothing about. And Lord, we, we praise you for that. We thank you for that. And we thank you for being 23 again and for Kyle's birthday. Lord, we're super proud of him. And we know that you are as well. Lord, uh, be with us now as we dig in on Daniel. And uh, I pray that it would be something helpful uh, to someone that's out there. And Lord, may it bring you honor and praise during this entire time. Lord, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone said amen. Are you guys ready? I am ready. Let's get on with this. So last week, we were in the book of Daniel, as you guys know. Uh, we finished our time together in Daniel chapter 6. Uh, six chapters in, and we have seen a lot happen in Daniel's life. A kingdom has been dispersed. Daniel and his buddies taken captive and off to a far-off land. A land full of idols and a land that has gods for everything. All things, all gods everywhere worshipped for everything. In Babylon, Daniel rose to leadership under three kings. Everyone say three. Uh, Daniel rose uh, to leadership under three kings, and then Babylon falls to the Medes and the Persians. Again, Daniel's faithfulness, his integrity. We spoke about his integrity last week. His honoring God's kingdom while serving in a man's kingdom. Chapter 6, King Darius has Daniel thrown into the lion's den over a law and decree of his workmates. And this was an attack on Daniel's character because they could not find anything wrong with him. They couldn't find anything wrong with him. So they, they judged his character, and it was God's character and his faithfulness. So after all night of being awake, the king, greatly distressed, King Darius runs to the den and calls for Daniel. Daniel 6, verse 20 says, when he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? It's Daniel 6.20. King Darius issues a decree, a law, that everyone in the kingdom must fear and be in reverence of God, of God, the God of Daniel. Daniel 6, verse 26 says, I issue this decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves us. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. And this brings us to chapter 7. Are you guys ready? That's just a recap. We're moving forward. So Daniel chapter 7. It's the first year of King Belshazzar. Another king and Daniel is still in charge. And I want you to remember that Daniel's an old man now. He's in his 80s. He's, a, he's an old dude. But this time, chapter 7, this time things have changed. It's not that the king who has a dream, it's Daniel. Chapter 7 is all about Daniel's dream. In verse 13, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven, God gives the meaning to Daniel's dream. 13. 
Let's turn this page. I got to read this because it's, it's awesome. In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All people, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Daniel seven twenty eight. Daniel is not good. This, verse 28, this is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts, and my face turned pale, but I kept the matter to myself. Daniel, in chapter 7, is not in a good place. He is very worried. He is not good. Daniel 8, uh, now in the third year of King Belshazzar. See, two years has passed. Two, and Daniel is still carrying the weight and the concern of his dream. Many of us are in this place today, like Daniel, waiting, praying. But remember Daniel, okay? Daniel didn't lose it. He didn't let the dream of two years die. He carried the weight of God's story with him. We have to stand strong, loved ones. Like Daniel, he stayed steadfast. He stayed true. He stayed with integrity. He stayed faithful. Remember, he was praying three times a day and praising God during this time. So two more years after this dream, Daniel 8, he has another dream. And then this dream, and then this happened in 8.15. While I, Daniel, was watching the vision and trying to understand it, there before me stood one who looked like a man. And I heard a man's voice from you, I calling, Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of the vision. Tell him the meaning of the vision. See, God's appointed angel, Gabriel, is introduced to mankind. This, this right here, Mary, this is, Gail, a big moment. This is a big moment for all of humanity. God's angel army is come, he comes in leadership, he comes to fight. He comes to help and to serve Daniel. God is fighting for us. Never give up hope on that. Whatever situation that you're in, no matter what your struggle is, your concern, or whatever situation that you're in, always know that God is fighting a battle for us that we can't see and that we know very, very little about. Gabriel comes to Daniel right here in the Bible. Gabriel comes to Daniel. Daniel 8, 17 says, As he came near the place where I was standing, I was terrified and fell prostrate. Son of man, he said to me, understand that the vision concerns the time of the end. While he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground, and then he touched me and raised me to my feet. Daniel 8, verse 27 I, Daniel, was exhausted and lay ill for several days. Then I got up and went about the king's business. I was appalled by the vision. It was beyond my understanding. Daniel 8, verse 27. Daniel is still not good. Daniel's not good from two years ago from the first dream. He's not good now two years later with the second dream. Daniel is not good. Daniel 9. It's the first year of Darius, son of Xerxes. Another leadership change. Another leadership change. And Daniel is still staying strong. He is still in position. Daniel goes for the fences with this swing. And he lifts up a prayer on behalf of him and the people of Israel. God's chosen people without a kingdom. Daniel 4 or Daniel 9, verse 4, Daniel says, I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed. Daniel 9, verse 20, while I was speaking, you guys sticking with me, I told you it was going to be fast. I want you to go after this is all done. I want you to read through the parts that I'm highlighting to tell this story. So uh, 9, 20 says, while I was speaking and praying, confessing my sins and the sin of my people Israel and making my request to the Lord my God for his holy hill, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, everyone say Gabriel, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in a swift fight 
about the time of the evening sacrifice, he instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. Whoa. Knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, an answer was given, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. Therefore, consider the message and understand the vision. See, he had a vision now. God's appointed angel Gabriel to introduce us to mankind. That's right. That has happened. So Daniel goes for the fences with this, and he offers up a prayer. And in verse 9, 20, and 23, God sent Gabriel to serve Daniel. Gabriel tells Daniel what is to come in, verse, in chapter 9. Chapter 10, third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, another leadership change. And Daniel was given a revelation. It's an understanding of something he would never have understood on his own. It's a revelation from God. See, a great war was coming, and Daniel was scared. Daniel 10, 1, 2, and 3. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. And at that time, I, Daniel, mourned. For three weeks, I ate no choice food, no meat, nor wine touched my lips, and I used no lotion at all until the three weeks were over. Daniel is still not good, but there's more. Are you ready for this? Gail, are you ready for this? Dad, are you ready? This, this is so good. Daniel 10, 4. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of the finest gold around his waist. His body was like chrysolite, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of the multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. The men with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and they hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at the great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned dead, deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees, and he said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully, consider carefully my words I am about to speak to you, and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. And then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding, gain understanding and humble yourself, position, humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come to respond to them. But the prince of Persia, king Kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, everyone say Michael. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future. For the vision concerns a time yet to come. While he was stay, saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. Then one who looked like a man touched my lips and opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I am overcome with anguish because of the vision, my Lord, and I am helpless. How can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid, old man, highly esteemed, he said. Peace. Everyone say peace. Peace. Be strong now. Be strong. God sends another angel to fight with Daniel. Gabriel, working one front of the war for Daniel, has now got Michael. This is, this is epic. We got two heavenly hosts of angels Leaders of God's army fighting, giving us a great example of what's taking place outside of our understanding. 
outside of the realm that we know of. We don't know anything about this. But right here in God's word, he sent two angels to fight on behalf of Daniel and the kingdom of God. Let's keep reading. This is not done. This is, this is so awesome. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened. And I said, Lord, speak, my Lord, since you have given me strength. So he said, do you know why I have come to you? Soon I will return to fight against the prince of Persia, and when I go, the prince of Greece will come. But first, I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. No one supports me against them except Michael, your prince. And in the first year of Darius the Mede, I took my stand to support and protect him. Did you see what just happened there? Did you notice that? I, I, I have read this before, and I have never noticed this. But check this out. This is the coolest thing ever. Daniel 10 flowed right into Daniel 11. There's no chapter pause. There's no break in the sentence. There's no break in the story. It flows right into one chapter into the next. God was so busy in, in Daniel's battles. He is so busy in our battles. He went right through the chapters. God flowed right through it. How many chapters in the Bible does God do this in his word? God is so busy on our behalf he went right through God's word from one chapter to the next. Daniel 11. Gabriel and Michael hand out what is about to happen. And it's the first account of record that heaven for Michael and Gabriel. Daniel 12. Michael finishes up his instructions to Daniel. And Daniel 12. Let's just read Daniel 12. Why don't we? 1 through 13, I think is what it's on here. Yes, Daniel finishes up his instructions in Daniel 12. So at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of the nations until then. But at the proper time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes will sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Verse 3, those who, were wi who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Take heart, Nat Gale. But you, Daniel, close up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there before me stood two others. Everyone say two. One on the bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, How long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? The man clothed in linen, he was above the water of the rivers, lifted his right hand, and his left hand toward heaven, and heard him swear by him who lives forever, saying, It will be a, for a time, times and a half a time. When the power of the holy people has been finally broken, all these things will be completed. I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked, My Lord, what will the outcome of all of this be? He replied, Go your way. Daniel, because the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless, and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. Wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom leads to understanding. From verse 11, from the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is, is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of 1,335 days. Verse 13, as for you, go your way to the end. You will rest, and then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. Do you know... As we close up, this is my last point for tonight's, for our book of study of uh, Daniel. And it's been such a, a great journey and a lot of teaching moments in this book. Uh, it just, it completely blows my mind, especially for times now that we are under and what we're dealing with uh, and where the world is at today. 
But there is no record whatsoever of Daniel's death. We know that he was an old man. Uh, he had his archangels that God sent to, to fight his battles for him and help him understand the visions and the two dreams that he had finishing up his book in Daniel. Um, but I do want to point out one thing as we close. God had to tell um, Gabriel to tell him in verse 9, Go your way, Daniel. Go your way. Go your way, Mary. Wayne, go your way. Go your way, Gail. Go your way, Kyle. Maddie, Morgan, go your way, Roger. Carol, go your way. Ian, go your way. Kate, Katie, go your way. Brandy, Dad, Molly, Uncle Jimmy, all those who are watching. God's word finishes up Daniel as he was telling Daniel to go your way. Lord, we thank you for uh, this time together. Lord, we just thank you for explaining and giving us wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And all those three things, when we put those things together, when we seek those things with our heart, it leads to understanding. And Lord, we don't want to be wicked. We don't want to be naive. We don't want to be the person that walks through this life not understanding why we're here and what our purpose is. And Daniel gives us so many uh, pinpoints on how to live our lives and what is to come and how to do things and how to stand faithful and strong even when the world around us is, is crumbling and wicked and, and cursed. Lord, be with us now as we go about our week. Uh, walk with us. Be with us. Hold our hand. Show us things that we don't see. Show us things and how to see things and look for you in our day. Lord, it's more than just taking you with us and, and having a moment of prayer time in the morning. But Lord, help us to take you into our day and into our conversations and into our place of work. And whatever it is that we do, Lord, we thank you for that. I pray for the ones that are struggling, Lord. I pray that they would be able to see and understand with wisdom and knowledge of your word and your love for them. And Lord, we thank you for the battle that you are fighting, that you have sent your army to fight our battles. We have no clue what's happening around us. But Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, for saving us, for loving us, not ever pushing us away, but always accepting us. Lord, help us strive to be better people. Help us to be more like you. Help us stand together in unity. Lord, we thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That concludes our study of Daniel. And man, that was great. I'm telling you. 28 minutes in. Guys, I want you to have a great week. If there's something that you want to post down below, check in uh, down below. Send a comment. Send me a prayer request. Whatever it is that you got. I got you back. Uh, we're in this thing together. Unlike what the government is telling you, we're in this together, man. We have so much to look forward to, no matter what is happening around us. Lord, uh, I just want to challenge somebody here tonight. I, I didn't plan on saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, there's been uh, a word that has been spoken over me uh, that usually comes around after Christmas time, which, you know, I've been, I usually start out around Thanksgiving sometimes, but sometimes I have a word or a couple of words that the words speak over my life uh, for the year to come. And sometimes those words are words that are good. Sometimes there's words that you hang on to, like faithfulness and, and steadfast was a couple of them that I've had in the past. Um, but some of them are, are, some, some of them are not good. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, I had one a couple of years ago when Carol lost her job. Uh, a few years back that uh, was minimized, you know, and I, I really didn't like that word. I didn't want that word. I argued with God about that word, but I obeyed God's word. And, you know, we got our finances in order. We gave away stuff. We, I got rid of golf clubs I hadn't used in a while, jackets, furniture, gave people stuff and just minimized, you know, it was a whole frame of mind. And then for a few months there, it was just, you know, no idea why I was doing this, but God knew. And when Carol lost her job, we were in such a great position 
to be able to, to handle that blow, um, that it was okay. You know, Carol was able to take her time finding the next job and, and it ended up to be a good one working for the conference. And, um, uh, I want you to be thinking about your word for next year. What is it, the word that God has given you that's placed on your heart that is going to speak over your life next year? And I know that's kind of hard to do because you don't know what that is. You don't know what that looks like. You know, who knows? 2020, who saw this coming? But 2021, let's turn the chapter whenever this time comes. Let's turn the chapter. You don't have to be December 31st. <laughs> Garbage. Turn the chapter today if you have to. That's what I'm saying. We're a part of God's kingdom. You can make this happen today. So think about, pray about, what is it that word that's going to speak over your life? Watch and see what happens. I'll be asking you about that soon, and we'll, we'll share some information and some details about that, and we'll celebrate together, okay? We'll watch and see what everything that God's going to do, because he's got this. So I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Peace. Happy birthday, Kyle.